Welcome, everybody. Craig Adams here from Wedding Film School, and we're live. Fancy. It's like magic, isn't it? We've got Garrett and Amber Bard today from Inamix. Baird. 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 They've got three dogs in the back of their house, so you might hear a little bit of barking, but they're super cute, so we'll allow it. Um, so we're going to be talking about all things Sony. They are definitely experts, way more than I am. I think that's a theme that's starting to become way more true than often. We're getting some really cool guests on the show, and uh, we're just going to introduce them. So uh, why don't you say hi? Hey, everybody. Hi, Hello. friends. How are you? Yay. So, so talk about I've shot with you once, twice, in New York City once, and then in Vegas, of all places. And they were very interesting shoots. But tell us a little a bit about your studio for anyone who hasn't seen your films or people who don't know what you do. Okay. Uh, we've been shooting wedding films for about 12 years now, worldwide, been been around the world a little bit, had some been privileged to, to do some traveling. Um, but yeah, I've shot, I don't know, over, over 300 now, I think, for our weddings. And uh, we switched to Sony. Couple years ago, and and uh, haven't looked back. Yeah, very cool. So you didn't always shoot on Sony. What were you shooting on before you made the switch, and what did you make the switch to? Sure. Previously, we had shot with the Canon 5D Mark III, and XL2. then we oh started Lord. back Don't in the day. <laughs> back in the day, Craig, we were standard def for people. Well, I'm just <laughs> saying that because we have been Canon lovers. Yes. For a very long time, every yeah. upgrade we did it was to another new Canon, and uh, till just a couple years ago. So the Canon, and so we were the XL2, then the 7D, Mark II, Mark III, and then we uh, switched straight to the Sony A7S, and then the S2 as soon as they came out. Actually, the day they came out, we switched to the A7S II. So we are just in love with the Sony platform for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so was, I, was, I was definitely all that, and. Uh, and uh, Wait, am I getting a little bit of noise on your end? No, I don't hear it. Yeah, so I was on Canon for a bit longer um, before I made the switch to the Mark II, as you can see right there. Um, so was it a good switch? Are you happy that you made the switch to Canon or Sony? Making the switch to Sony was probably one of the... I, it was a great decision for our business, yeah. for sure. Um, it just allows us to do so much more on a wedding day and keeping things, of course, as Craig loves, minimal. And we just absolutely love it. I think whenever we were shooting in New York, did we shoot on the... Um, Original A7. Yeah, the A7S, A7S whenever yeah. Craig helped us out. So um, it was a couple of years ago. And we, we actually, our very first Sony camera was the FS700, which is one of their larger pro cameras. And uh, we really loved that camera, but there it, it is. <laughs> giant. Yeah, it's we giant. have some gear over here that we're, we can show you. <laughs> yes, it's giant, but we absolutely love that camera. And so it was just kind of for us when the A7S came out, it was the natural progression. Yeah. And, um, well, and switching from the Mark III to the A7S, even is I'm not a photographer, I dabble a little bit, but to me, it was the difference in going shooting JPEG and shooting RAW. Now, it's not actually raw video, but that's the kind of flexibility that it gave me, and it just opened up a whole new world for us. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about some of the things that haters hate on Sony for. Oh! Let's, talk about, let's talk about the skin tones. Okay. Is that a problem? No. Short answer. Next <laughs> Short question. <answer. laughs> oh, no, seriously, though, on the A7S original one, there were some, it tended to go, like on our Mark III's, it tended to go red. Like if I was in a Canon church. Canon Mark III. Sorry, Canon Mark III. Uh, Fighting Mark Three. If I was in a church of red carpet, my life was over. It was just everything went red, so I really had to work with that. With the original A7S, um, it tended to go just to green a little bit, and it was easy fix. I could take it out and post, no problem. Um, now with the new, I think s color science that Sony has in their A7S2, the Cine Four, I think it's called. Um, it it has greatly improved the skin tones. I don't have any issues with it at all. But one thing with any type of camera. It's going to be just different. Right. Not that it's bad or good. It's just totally different. So, you know, when you're accustomed to coloring the Canon 5D Mark III that does tend to go orange or, you know, tungsten or whatever you want to call it, it's just, just totally different whenever you switch to another camera. And matching your colors can be kind of a pain sometimes. So It's a different approach. You cannot different... approach the footage coming from these Sony's cameras the way that you approach the footage coming from the Canon uh, cameras. Two totally different platforms. 
So uh, the A7S Mark II versus the A6300, do you think there's different stuff going on with the color? Are they easily matchable, or are they exactly the same? I, I haven't pixel peeped. I've shot three weddings now using both cameras, and we use, we use the 6300 as a, a B cam, uh, like for our, our one-handed gimbal, things like that, some slider shots. I haven't noticed any difference. I mean, I haven't really sat down there and, and pixel peeped, but I color graded the 6300 footage the same as I would the A7S II footage, and I got the same results. So it's it's very, very close. And honestly, the 6300 is just a little bit sharper, and that kind of blew me away. Ooh, throwing shade at the, A, at the A7S Mark II. Damn. <laughs> it's just a little bit sharper. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, the, the, I wish that the A7S II had the, sh the sharpness. I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. This S2 is amazingly sharp, but the 6300, a little sharper, and it has some amazing autofocus stuff that I hope they put in the next iteration of the A7S series. Okay, so for people who are still in Canon land, no hate, just, just you know, you just, right. they're just not here yet. The future is Sony right now. Um, but for those still shooting with a, a Canon 5D Mark III, perhaps, like, could they easily match it? Like, what do you think about matching different cameras versus different brands? It's tough. We Our very first wedding with the Sony A7S, we had four or five different cameras that day. As many different kinds of cameras as possible. It, it was Seriously. ridiculous. So we had the FS700, we had the 5D Mark III, we had the A7S, we we're using the FS700, and I feel like the AX100. like we had AX 60 d thrown in there somewhere. I don't know, we had a ton of different, now, Garrett did cuss a little bit during the color grading. <laughs> he does all the color grading. So he cussed a little bit, he was a little bit upset with some of it, um, but overall it wasn't, it just took a little more tweaking right. than you're used to. So you can color match them, especially if you don't want to go all in all at once. That is kind of intimidating for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make sure you, you have your tried and true first, you know, then your new stuff. So, and that's exactly what we did. We had one A7S, Garrett says, here you go, shoot the bride prep with this. I was like, okay. <laughs> she had never and, used a Sony camera before, no. ever. And, besides and I the gave it, she didn't know I was going to tell her to do that that morning. And I said, here, take the A7. Uh, uh, and F. just and and shoot with it. And she's like, well, I don't know how to use it. And I said, Well, your f stops here, your shutters here, ISOs here. There you go. And she rocked it. So she didn't have to get into the menus that day. I set it up for her, and she killed it. Yep. So and I will tell you, when editing all these those cameras together, it was an outdoor wedding, so I had t plenty of light. But switching between the Mark III and the A7 is like one was noticeably sharper, and and the other one was was a little mushy. A little mushy. A little mushy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you almost have to like put a filter on it to compensate for the difference. Like yeah, this real. is this is the Canon 5D Mark III vintage angle. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So really let's, let's talk to... let's talk about uh problem number two. People uh like to talk about overheating. Let's talk okay. about that a little bit. Sure. When we first purchased the A7S2, we did not shoot in 4K because I did some tests, I could only get 20 minutes out of it before we shut down. Uh, that's when we first got it. Ne uh, in the last couple months, a couple months now, three months maybe, they have a new firmware that when you use um, the new firmware in conjunction with the Sony battery grip, I don't know what difference that makes, but they did something with, with the software in there that it greatly reduces the overheating. We started shooting 4K a few months ago and haven't looked back. It has not once overheated. And I'm talking about outdoor weddings and Catholic lockdown weddings. shots for for an hour long. Um, yeah. I've never had it. Knock on wood, please don't do that. <laughs> Love you. But no, seriously, we've never had it overheat. 6300 is a different story. Um, I did shoot an entire wedding uh, on one of our review videos. Um, all day long, never overheated. However, when I shoot, uh, even during the ceremony, I'm what Amber calls a hunter. I don't let it roll and roll and roll and roll and roll. I look for the shot, shoot two or three minutes, go to the next shot, shoot two or three minutes, and I'm kind of all over the place. So shooting anywhere from 30 seconds to three-minute clips all day long from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., never had a single issue with it. Uh, and you can review, see our uh, review on the overheating, but I an overheating test, it goes about 30 minutes, and that's in like 68-degree office. So I wouldn't know if I would recommend it for a lockdown shot or a 
a shot that you had to have that footage rock solid documentary style every second of the ceremony to me it's more of a filmmaker's camera to where you can get those creative shots with it get get, get the tight shots of mom crying and then go back over and get a wide shot of the bride and groom then go in the back get a slider you know stuff like that and not just continuously shooting for hours on end so it's a great mm -hmm. v cam for us fantastic v cam yes cool so let's talk about the switch because most people are coming from canon and they have canon glass uh does it make sense to kind of try to use the canon glass with adapters and then slowly make their way to a uh, sony native glass for the full was it full frame e-mount right what would yeah. you suggest yeah i mean we use the metabones mark IV for for at least i mean we still use it we actually still use the canon 70 to 200 mm -hmm version two. We were waiting for the Sony G Master and we just didn't feel like there was anything comparable. <laughs> Had to give it a kiss. All right. I'm not getting any audio. Just going to double check. But yeah, uh, we're just talking about lenses right now. I just kissed my lens. Um, so I guess it's kind of like a, a transition. You know, most people are going to make their Canon glass work for the camera and then work with adapters and then slowly start to make the change. You would make the change because you want autofocus, uh, because you want, um, you know, smaller glass. If it's native right on, you don't have to have those extra inches with the adapter. Um, I know the G Master series glass is a little bigger and heavier than, you know, the, the actual smaller glass made for the E-mount. Um, but yeah. All right. Double checking. Garrett, you there? Hello. Hello. All right. I, I, I hear you. Let's double check your video feed. Are we there? All right. I see you. There we go. Okay. We're having a big storm roll through right now, so that's probably yeah. has something to do with that. I, th I think it's just because Larry is too close to you. He's in Indiana <laughs> as well. I think Larry is the big storm, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we cut off at? Um, so we didn't hear any of your uh, chat about lenses. I tried to fill in a little bit, but like people with Canon glass, like what would be the, like the first and second lens that you would get? Like what what glass do you have? I guess for weddings. Awesome. Okay, so if price is not an option, I would definitely go G Master. But that's not the case for a lot of people, especially whenever you're getting a whole new kit. So I absolutely love the. Uh, 24 to 70 f4 that Sony has and it's a little bit on the less expensive yeah, side it's, it's much and it's smaller. very small it has um, is built in mm -hmm. so it's it's a great lens and a lot of people love the range of a 24 to 70 um, it does take a little bit of getting used to with the this is their old fly-by-wire system so you do have to get used to it it does work quite a bit differently and can be a little frustrating at first if you have Canon glass for the first year that we shot with the Sony cameras, we were all adapters because we had stacks of L glass that I just didn't want to throw that money away and buy all new glass. So for the first year, we used all Canon glass on it. Cool. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I'm going to take a quick moment to uh, be that obnoxious person with Snapchat. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, follow this Snapchat right here, and then you can uh, take screenshots of the uh, video. And uh, put a filter on my face, troll me, try to make it as ridiculous as possible. Hold on, hold on. We're going to get the macro focus. Check this out. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. Cool. And then in a couple minutes, we're going to let uh, Garen and Amber, because they're on Snapchat as well. They're Snapchatting. All, yeah. the cool, all the cool kids are Snapchatting. They all have the awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So Snapchat me some photos of the live stream and just completely troll my face. Make me, make me cry on, on the live broadcast. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next question people are wondering about uh, battery life. The batteries are small. Little, Here you little, go. little Tic Tacs, right? Yeah. How, how are we doing? SD card. Battery. <laughs> Look how tiny that is. That is so tiny. So my, my thing is I never turn my camera off on a wedding day. Rarely ever. So with the 5D Mark III, to give you a general thing, I was probably using between six and eight batteries. Now I'm using 
probably about eight Sony batteries. So it's not that huge of a jump. Um, I saw on a Facebook group the other day, one guy, he totally had no idea. And he was like, well, I've heard that they're awful and they only give you like 15 or 20 minutes of continuous recording, which is not the case. They give you an hour of re continuous recording. We've tested it um, yep. on a battery and grip, two hours solid recording. Yep. So. Also on the 6300, one battery, one hour. Oh, okay. and, and that's with airplane mode turned on. So yes. it's not trying to get Wi-Fi signals and such. And then it's also with the image stabilization turned on. So yes. it's, it's worth it, also, it also reacts to positivity and negativity, like the goop in Ghostbusters. Yes. Anyone follow me? So if you're nice to your camera, if you're like shooting, and then you kind of just like go like that a little bit and whisper like sweet nothings, like I love you, you're the best. Like the battery life will get a little bit better, just a tiny so. bit. Reinforcement, absolutely. Yeah. But if you're mean to it, if you just troll people and you're like, <laughs> bah, look at those shoes, damn, Daniel. If you don't subscribe great. to us on YouTube, then it's totally going to be awful. <laughs> yeah, things like that, you know, totally. So, um, other than weddings, what do you guys do? Do you do commercial work? Do you, what kind of stuff do you do? You guys, it's it's I'm sorry, ready. it's like tornado. Tornado looking outside. Okay, so <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> Damn. I wanted to say one thing really quick. We absolutely love weddings, yep. and we have never aspired to do anything other than weddings. A lot of people use weddings as a stepping stone to maybe do feature films or commercial work, and we we just absolutely love weddings and we've never used it for that now and it's not a problem if you do but i think people sometimes think that it's not okay to love weddings and love doing it so that is one aside i wanted to say um so through our weddings we have met people who real you know just have hired us to do corporate work so we we do all kinds of we do anything we always say We'll do anything you want us to do. We we work for right now. We're working for a furniture company in Jasper, Indiana. You know, we work for hospitals. We work for coal mines. Indianapolis Light and Power. I mean, yeah, just... we've worked for seed companies, which yeah. you know we're in Indiana, so that makes sense. And we've done a music video. Um, so we just don't look at that though, because it's it's very country. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say that <laughs> we are in Indiana. Yeah. But we do. It, basically, we do anything, but our main focus is weddings and making our beautiful couples very happy with us, or you know, have giving them um, amazing wedding films. Yes. How, how um, long have you been shooting weddings? weddings. No. no. Ugh, that's a great question. We have been shooting weddings for twelve years. Wow. Wow. So, wow. Wow. Wilson. Wilson. Look at that! Oh my lord! Wow! Wow! That is not a Snapchat code, people. You cannot scan <laughs> that. That is actually a storm going over their house. Okay, okay close it. Garrett's afraid of it's, storms. I'm terrified of tornadoes. Sorry. Tornado. So we got some um, quick fire questions on Twitter sure. from Kareem. He's asking, when you're shooting, do you use zebras? Do you use focus peaking? Do you do the uh, digital punch-in while you're recording? What's that look like? Those are great questions. Um, we do not use zebras or focus peaking, mainly because I feel like they're kind of distracting. Um, if you just test the back of your screen, and you know, we never had, we're coming from a 5D Mark III, we never had that capability before, so we just, we really don't use it. I mean, maybe we should, but. I feel like I can, I can get it just a little sharper mile with my eyes. Um, and then we do use Zoom to focus, so, yes. for wah, sure. Wah, wah. MLG status, pro status, they don't yeah. need it, I love it. I don't need it, it's but. Because it's like, if you shoot with a camera, then edit, then you shoot, then edit, yeah. you yeah. get to know. But if you just shoot with a camera and never edit, Super hard. Yeah. Sweet, sweet pea cinema. All right. They're asking about the Osmo. Have you ever tried it out? Have you, tr like, what gimbals? Do you use any kind of handheld thingies? Yeah. So that yeah. actually segues over to um, going with a lighter gear kit. Uh, we used to use the DJI Ronin, still have it. It's for sale. Anybody wants to buy one? It's this big. You know, it's giant. It's, it's giant. cumbersome. It's hard to transport. We literally had a whole seat, like a seat in our back seat where we would like strap it in and it was just always ready to go. So it's just, it's kind of a pain and we were sick of it. We used it all last year. Let's say we used the Ronin all last year. And then this year we're like, we're going smaller. This is, we're getting too old for this crap. Mm -hmm. And so, no <laughs> So we're like, let's, uh, before that, we also used the glide cam, of course, like everyone else did. But so now we are using, and I will let you, because you're the one who Sure, uses it's it. called the Pilot Fly H1. I'm getting ready to pick up the H2. It has a little bit bigger motors, it does a little better job. But with the Mark III, 
I wasn't able to use those single-handed gimbals because there wasn't one out there that um, would support the weight. And now with the, the smaller one, the single handheld one, it's really nice because everything that we take to a wedding to shoot it, as far as our cameras, all of that fits in a single carry-on think tank bag. So we roll in, and even my even my handheld gimbal is in there, and that just makes our lives so much easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And say that say that product one more because we got we got Noba Tech, Jerry Lee. He's an awesome YouTuber, uh, does tech gear reviews, and he's asking about the Pilotfly H2. What was the one that you mentioned? We have the Pilotfly H1. Okay. We're going to upgrade to the Pilotfly H2. It's just a little bit bigger, has a little bit better motors, and does a little better job of, of smoothing out some of those um, bumps and stuff. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. But All still right. very compact. Yeah. Um, so people are asking, like, is there anything... Well, okay, so I would like to talk about the minimal because I'm going through the same exact process in my own way, I believe. You know, when you first start out, you, like, get more gear and you try to, like, do cool stuff and you almost buy stuff for, like, stupid reasons to look cool. But now that I'm getting more serious about saying no, doing quality over quantity and just, like, completely finding my own style and doing it less for other reasons, um, being true to my dreams, um, I'm getting less and less gear, just finding ways to do more with less. Like, if I could shoot a whole wedding with one lens and make it work, like, I would do that. Like... Uh, and then like what you said about rolling into a wedding with just a small amount of gear, rather like two whole carts, like that also just eliminates so much stress. And it also puts you in a different light as far as the other people at the wedding. Like, do you, would you say that you're almost getting to the point where you have as much gear as the photographer? Because every time I see a photographer at a wedding or an event, I'm like, if only I could just roll in with a bag and that's it. Yeah. It's so awesome. <laughs> Shot a couple of weddings recently where the photographer has more gear than than than, than we do, and I'm like, yes. MLG status. Yes. <laughs> so I will tell you this: up until just this year, we were always bigger, more, you know, like the more gear we had, uh, we must look more professional, you know, like we had we had giant sliders, we had tons of stuff, we had this we had this Pelican case that it took both of us to lift into our truck. It was full of cameras and lenses and just, I mean, it was full. Yeah. It, I mean, Craig probably could have lifted it by himself, but we don't want no, to throw our no, back out. No, absolutely not. <laughs> we don't want to throw our back out. You know, we're, we're old. So, um, so after we got the Sony cameras, we found ourselves like having more space in our, our big Pelican case. And uh, we might put like a, a side by side comparison of what we used to take with us. We had this, you know, this cart that we had to, to bring in and we had our giant Pelican case and we had our Pelican case with our lighting, our lighting yeah. in it. And we had, you know, then all of our light stands, tripods, we had the Ronin, which takes its own stand. So we had this giant rolling case to the point where, you know, in Southern Indiana, that's not a huge deal because most of the venues you can roll up, park in front of, unload everything, not an issue. Right. But you know, when we're you know working in downtown Indianapolis or New York or Chicago, where you have to valet your truck and never see it again for the rest of the day, it was kind of cumbersome, and we were having to use like the um, what was it, the elevator for the the freight the elevator. Freight elevator. They wouldn't <laughs> let know? us on normal elevators. So it's like okay, something has got to give. We actually have more space in our case now. So nice. I, yeah, so we just pared everything down to the essentials. Um, we're not wanting for anything anymore, and we're using the Think Tank airport security that you know fits in an overhead compartment. We what we use in in Vegas, Craig, with everything fit in that except for you know, then we have a canvas bag with all of our monopods and tripods and and slider, and and that's it. So we're awesome. really happy. So people want to know the exact, if you want to give away this little secret, what is the exact picture profile you guys are shooting on with the A7S? Oh, geez. All right. We will give that away. We use a modified, I have to write it down because it's a lot. And <laughs> it is a lot. It's way more than the Canon. Like it's just more yeah. options. I love it. So we do not use S-Log 2 or 3 for weddings because it just is so much color grading and we want to try to get our films out as quickly as we can. So what we are using now is a modified PP8. It's The color mode is S-Gamut, G-A-M-U-T-3 dot Cine, C-I-N-E, and the gamma is Cine 4. 
That's a lot. Which I think is what a lot, a lot of people use. It just yeah. it's the it maintains the highlights the the best it can without going into uh, the S log. Now, on some occasions, I will switch to S log if like we're doing a first look underneath a tree where there's lots of shade and the bride's walking in from well on the, one of our weddings from a barn which is out in in the the sun and if i didn't turn s log on she would just be a white blob walking until she got to the shadows so mm -hmm. i did turn s log three on it kind of kind of saved my butt a little bit on that one mm -hmm. yeah. but if she's but, a white blob you just black and white it and it's hard <laughs> <laughs> so with this minimal gear you mentioned lighting what are you doing for lighting oh craig we are using well let me tell what we start with we were using we were using um, a set of two of the dito lights yeah. so we have to go in i have to get in there find a place to set up poles what well, craig yeah craig's using hold them. on break the fourth yeah. wall Ba -ba -ba that looks like exactly the same thing that's, we have. Yeah, so that's what we would use. And a lot of the times here in our area, we would race from the ceremony, we would do the photo session, and then we would try to beat the bride and groom to the reception. So there's not a lot of time. It's a to, race you never win. It, right. It's it, And then you, I mean, you keep this in mind, slow is pro. Yeah. So Ooh, the more you yeah. Low is pro. The more you frenzy, you drop stuff, you you forget things. So yeah, slow is pro. Just do everything deliberately, and and you'll be much better off, and you won't get stressed out. So then with those dedos, you know, I had to find a plug in. Hopefully the DJ didn't take them all, and then tape down the wires so nobody trips over. Just a lot of lot of stuff to go over. So now we're using. We have a couple light panels that are not any brand name. I got them off Amazon. When we first started, like I, they've been in storage for a long time, but they're 300 LEDs each. They are not, um, you cannot adjust the color temperature, which is, I like that because on the lights, the LED lights that I've used that you are able to do that, you lose output power because some of the LEDs are one color, some of the LEDs are another. So you lose a lot of output power. Um, but yeah, these have a little tungsten filter you can put on it and we put them on a pole. I did a couple of tests. They take this, the bigger Sony, bigger Sony style batteries and they'll go for like eight hours continuously. We don't use a tungsten filter though. As no, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh, to match, just just to match Oops. the reception lighting. <laughs> Oops. So yeah. we tr we're just trying to keep that simple, and they actually slide into the front of our think tank bag. Yep. So there's a little outside pocket on the think tank bag. It slides right in there. Mm -hmm. Wow, love it. All right, so let's talk about what's behind you. You you're not you're not <laughs> nerds, are you? <laughs> You are nerds. What is that? Yeah. Okay, we got Stay Puffed back there. And... So our brides and grooms know us for being nerds. And we got this great little gift from a couple. Ooh, um, wow. Custom Millennium Falcon painted to look like Amber and I. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I don't know why you're Han Solo. I should be Han Solo. I'm not <laughs> Chewie for sure. We're uber nerds. Yeah. We love all the fandoms, though. And this is our happy place. We decided to make our office fun and and just a place that that's mm -hmm. just ours. We try to keep the nerd in the office though. Yep. So it doesn't, we have a home office, so it, we try not to let the nerd creep out into the, into the house, although there are a couple things out there for sure. So yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff. We might do a, an office tour eventually, so you guys Crib can style. see. Yeah, cribs. <laughs> Crib nice. style, so you can see everything, but so it's. Star Wars or Star Trek? Both. You have to pick one. All right, fine. Both. You can't. You can't. No. Here, look right here. If you're going for content, Star uh, Star Star Trek. Locutus. Yeah. Star Trek. Star Trek has better stories and is is deeper and it talks about real mm. real issues we face today. Sure. For sure. Okay, we cannot go down that path. <laughs> we, have to, oh, we have to. Love Doctor Who too, Doctor guys. Who. Oh, storytelling. Craig, are you on a Doctor Who? I've Me. never seen a single episode of Doctor Who. I've always wanted to. I know yes. it's there. Like, if I ever got sick and I was like, next five weeks, I'm just going to watch this if I'm in the it's hospital or something. It's yeah. out there. The first couple episodes, I mean, since they're kind of older, you have to just kind of get through that. But, oh, my God, the last season blew my mind. There we go. Well, that's all I'll say about that. And then most of them are on Amazon Prime. Amazon so Prime. Watch yep. them for free. Word. Okay, so um, people are asking about tripods and stuff. A lot of people are tr trying to test out, uh, I forget the name of the brand, but it's like the monopods that are also tripods. Uh, I got a kind of a little bit, bit of a sense of what you guys shoot with, but kind of talk about what you wor work with support wise. Sure. So well, the tripods we use are the um, carbon fiber Manfrotto tripods. 
Um, they're super lightweight. We used to use the other heavier metal ones, but in our effort to downsize, we went to the carbon fiber Manfrotto ones. And then uh, we for the- got some new heads. Yeah, we got some really much smaller tripod heads um, that fit the A7S II much better. Um, and the plate is, is much smaller too, so it works out a lot. Yeah, here's the plate for the new heads we Quick have. Release. Quick release place, super small. Absolutely love it. And we use um, the Siru? I forget how to question say it. Mark? Yeah, people are saying it. Sweet peas in the Siru? I don't know. Something. I don't know. That's what we use for our monopods. Um, it has a little feet at the bottom. Um, one thing we, it did, it, ours used to have the longer feet. They were like maybe a foot. A foot and a half or something. They were really yeah. long and they were kind of, they got in the way, especially on a packed dance floor. But now we uh, we sent them to Siru mm -hmm. and they put much smaller ones on. So we're much happier with those. Yeah. Um, We've never been the type to want to leave those. I know Taki does. He leaves his. He puts sandbag on it and just it leaves it. Wait, so, who is Taki? Let's never talk about this Taki okay. guy. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's an urban legend. I think he is. <laughs> he is a very tall Asian man. <laughs> Nicest guy you'll ever meet. Probably. I mean, besides Craig. Besides Craig, of course. <laughs> I'm gonna but, call him. I'm gonna call him Taki because he hates it. Oh, oh he, he does. Shoot. Come at me, bro. Come at so me. We, for our slider, we use a carbon fiber rhino slider. It's it's short, so it's maybe like a – is it a foot long? Maybe. No, it's, it's, it's long on the foot. It, I don't it, remember. It's, it's like less than two, though. And then we also have the Edelkrone, which I know you use, Craig. So we use both of those um, depending on the application. We have some really long sliders. I used to have to have my three-footer everywhere I go, and it was all aluminum and <sighs> – I love it, but it's just part of downsizing. I, I can't carry a lot of stuff. Yeah, so we had a three-foot, I think it was digital juice slider. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. Way too old for you, Craig. Back <laughs> so in the day. Back in the day, they had their stack track. I mean, whenever you first, whenever we first started, that's what you use if you're a professional. But anyway, the digital digital slider was super smooth, and we and they were so sturdy, they but were they tanks. were tanks. Tanks, yes, they were yeah. so heavy. And we have two two. Three foot ones yeah. and one five foot one. One five foot one. We yeah. do use that for corporate work though. So Okay. So I want to wrap up with two two really quick topics and then we're going to uh, plug some socials for you guys and then we're gonna wrap up soon, hopefully within like ten minutes. But um so we talked about gear. Wedding filmmakers talk way too much about gear. You're going into your wedding season. It's probably, you know, like what do you have in mind like are you to the point where you just are a solid team? You know exactly what you need to do. Like, what are you going to work on this season? How does it look for you two? Oh, that's a good question. We're solid. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this so long. We barely even have to speak to each other on a wedding day. Um, so it just is mainly what, what we say is we're looking for the quality shots and we're looking for the... I have always been the type of person that shoots a lot. I shoot quantity and I'm trying to get away from that. So it's a little easier in editing. Um, so I'm trying to force myself to look for more of the quality shots, the ones that are just solid and, uh, and beautiful and just forcing myself to, to do that. Um, yeah. Cause our, our, our films, you know, we several years ago were an hour long. And they went down to 45, down to 30. And now our biggest package comes with a 20 minute film. If they want that, nobody ever buys that. So we we can focus because we don't have to fill time, we can focus on quality and 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 that just makes it's it's more freeing. It is much shoot. more yeah. freeing for sure. Um and and especially, you know, like we're doing a couple same day edits again this year. We do those occasionally. So we're just trying to really pare down also what we shoot. Um and and just also educating the bride on what helps us shoot them. Yeah. You know, like what helps us give them an amazing story as well. So like, that's like vendor meals. Those help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, a lot of, a lot, we do a lot of Catholic weddings. So, you know, we're educating them. Like if you're going to do a Catholic wedding where you can't have personal vows, make sure you give us letters or make sure you put pressure on your maid of honor and best man to give us a good toast, which a lot of the times we don't get. So, just education of our brides is another thing we're definitely going to be focusing on. Yeah. So I recently made the switch to shooting all of my weddings 
with Wedding Film School. So they're all going to be education uh, related. Uh, okay. You just launched your new YouTube channel. Yes. So kind of, what is that all about? We got four videos now, I think. Yes. Well, we felt like it was about time. Um, we've been doing this long enough. And I will say one thing. Um, I wish that something like Wedding Film School would have been around whenever we were first starting because we learned everything absolutely the hard way, for sure, 100%, yeah. everything the hard way. So good job, Craig. I'm glad that you, you've taken this path. However, um, so we decided to start Gear, Glasses, and Gadgets, which is something that like we posted on social media, like, help us name this because we have no idea what to name it. Um, so that's what our social media fans have helped us out with. And we're just all about education, and um, we're really wanting to push that um, focus focus centric on gear, uh, especially like doing reviews and tutorials. And then also, we're gonna eventually it, we're working on it because we're building a studio in our garage. Um, like quick tips, things we've learned about just actually a wedding day from, you know, um, just just everything. Yeah. So nothing is off the limits. Right. Oh, there's that. So you just posted a lens review, yeah. correct? What can we expect in the future? What do you have in the pipeline? Oh, goodness. What do we I have? See, the next one I'm working on is the best SD card for shooting 4K. Ooh. So I, had, I have this theory that the faster card you get, the, the less your camera is going to overheat uh, because the camera doesn't have to buffer as much information. So that that's I'm going to sit down. I bought a little laser temperature gun, get real scientific and... Well, not really, but anyways, try to try to see if that's the case and, and the best the best SD card for uh, shooting 4K. Nice. Speaking I love of, it. Somebody asked us a question on Instagram a couple days ago, and I wanted to make sure we touch on it. It's like, what computers do we use to edit the 4K footage? Real quick, I use a three-year-old iMac. Amber uses a two-year-old uh, MacBook Pro, and we edit everything in proxy. We have no problems. No issues at all. Problems. So you don't have to have the latest and greatest laptop or Mega iMac. Machine, yeah. yeah. So we're editing on these older machines. Now we will upgrade um, whenever Apple comes out with their next iteration of MacBook Pros or iMacs. I mean, yeah. We're just kind of waiting around to see what happens. But up to this point, you know, it's what we're doing. Yep. I think a lot of people are waiting on those new MacBook Pros. Uh, yeah. Should be exciting. I'm definitely going to upgrade as soon as they come out. But yeah, I made the, the upgrade to 4K. And I complain a lot about uh, uploading because I think YouTube does something differently with 4K. But editing-wise, it's the same old thing as long as you use the, the proxy or the optimize. You know, right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, simply, you just have to have more hard drive space. You know, that's the bottom line. And hard drives have come down so much in price that yeah. it's not that huge of a, a deal. So Cool. So I love you, too. You know, awesome. I, I do have one request of your YouTube videos, though. Okay. I want more puppies in them. All three of the dogs. Oh, all three. You've got to watch the, the latest one. There's one puppy in, in the latest one. Okay. More. Just in every, it should just be like dogs reviewing the lens. <laughs> I know, I don't know what they would do to an SD card, but like, no, we no, had they, that they, happen. They, they chew them up. They yeah. chew them up. Yeah, a non-used one. Uh, one of our dogs just looked like one little bite in it, and it's gone. It gone. That's mm. happened. That happened for sure. Well, what I would love. Well, thank you so much. This is fun. Uh, what I would love this wedding film school squad. You guys are just lighting up. Moo is finally here. Moo. I just met him uh, last night. <laughs> oh, Moo. Okay, so what I would love for y'all to do is one, give this video a like on YouTube. Two, go straight to their YouTube, which you'll find a link directly in the description of the video. I made it really easy for you guys. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. You're going to get awesome content probably better and more knowledgeable because like they have been doing this for so long and they have like actual footage of the wedding alongside their tutorial which is awesome you know that's what i'm trying to do more of but their latest videos are just fire fire and they're just starting out so give them a subscribe and uh thank you guys so much you guys were awesome and follow amber on snapchat see a yes. lot of bots and stuff there's also a link in the description for Snapchat as well. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. All right.
we're going to end it. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we're going to try to do live streams every Wednesday. So happy Wedding Film School Wednesday. Um, peace out. I love y'all.